Hi guys, this is Shakti from Around the Wicket, where we not only speak about the game, but we try to learn more about the humans behind our sport. Now I have a question. You know, we have a gynecologist, a biomedical or cardiac scientist. A uh, cardiovascular scientist. Cardiovascular yeah. scientist and a dentist. You know, unfortunately today we're not talking anything medical. We are talking cricket. Um, so I have the ca current captain of the German cricket team in Anuradha Doda Balapur. I hope I said that name, you know, properly. I haven't murdered it. Perfect. And former captain of the German cricket team in Stephanie Fronmeyer. Thank you both for joining me on Around the Wicket. It's Thanks good to be here. Well, we had a little bit of an introduction before I started, um, you know, the chat. Uh, but how are things going for both of you um, during COVID times? How are you adapting? Um, so, yeah, with Corona, um, I guess all the cricket's been limited to to a very small amount. I think we were fortunate that um, we had some friendlies uh, in the in the end of the summer. Um, otherwise, you know, it's crazy. Things are very different to what it used to be. We try to get uh, as much cricket in as possible. Uh, but obviously the possibilities are a bit limited at the moment. So we just uh, try to stick it out and and hope for better times. And yourself, Anuradha? Oh yeah, I mean, similar situation. Although we're in different parts of the country. So Steffi is based in Munich, I'm in uh, Frankfurt. But overall, the, the situation is kind of quite... Um, yeah, difficult, I guess, for, for more or less everyone. Um, but yeah, work's going on fairly well. Cricket, a uh, bit of a yeah, low low kind of season for us. We've managed the tour to Austria with the national team, which was really a blessing. I think it's kind of the uh, silver lining, I'd say, for us. But domestic cricket so pretty much came to halt, uh, except for a few friendlies where, you know, some teams could travel over maybe an hour or two max. It is a big country. I think it's hard to get all the cricket in if you are restricted mm. travel-wise. Uh, but yeah, just uh, hanging on. Hopefully, uh, winter is, is a bit better and next year we have a lot more cricket to look forward to. Yeah. We'll yeah. talk about Austria soon. Stephanie was just saying that, you know, if she was there, she would probably have the record uh, and her other, but, <laughs> you know, she couldn't make it due to work. <laughs> um, but, you know, like with all our guests, we like to ask, um, you know, how it all started for for both of you. Obviously, you have had different journeys um, with, with cricket. Um, and rather, you're from, you know, from India yourself, uh, from Karnataka, um, stayed in South. And, you know, Stephanie, you've played cricket for Germany for a long, long time. But beginning, how did it all start for you both? Um, and why did you choose cricket? Okay, cool. So, um, I grew up in Germany, uh, way in the South, a small town called Tigansi, which is a, a really beautiful place. And, and I was lucky enough that one of our teachers provided it as like an extracurricular sport. He was an English and sports teacher. Um, and I thought, hey, why not give it a try? Uh, ended up showing, I guess, a bit of talent. Um, the good thing about playing cricket as a woman in Germany is that you very quickly can go up the ranks if you have a bit of talent. Mm -hmm. um, so I've, I've played for a while, mostly with the guys, and I think 2009 uh, we decided let's get all the girls together that we can find in Germany and, and just make a national team and see what comes of it. Um, so actually our women's office in Monica and I and a couple of friends of mine just got a group together. We tried to find out all the girls that are playing in Germany. Yeah. Went, everybody went to Vienna actually. The team that we played against, some of the girls were there. Um, and that's when the national team started and since I was the one with um, the German roots and, and probably one of the most experienced players. I, I captained it for nine years uh, until I passed it on to Anu. Uh, yep. and that's, I guess, my story. <laughs> Excellent. And Anuradha yourself, you know, oh, you are from Karnataka. Um, you know, you also um, applied your trade, I guess, under the tutelage of uh, Irfan Said, who we had actually about, you know, a month ago. Um, so tell us mm -hmm. about how, how your journey started and when did you decide to move to Germany? Um, yeah, but it does go back a couple of decades, which makes me feel a bit old now. <laughs> but uh, I mean, like every other kid growing up in India, you know, it's a cricket-crazy nation. Um, 
I think we all watched a lot of cricket on TV. Uh, my family is a yeah, pretty huge, huge fan. Grandfather, dad, brother, all of us. So there was always cricket to watch on TV, although it was mainly men's cricket at that point, all on the radio. Uh, so we caught onto the game quite quite easily, and then you know playing in in the driveway or backyard or with neighbors close by, um, like gully cricket as we call it. Mm. <laughs> uh, so that's how I picked up the game. But it was even I think I was twelve. 12 or 13 uh, when I got into formal training that was through a friend in in school who used to play for the Karnataka side then and she said hey why don't you come along if you like it so that was introduction to hardball cricket and um, yeah I think after that about 7 8 years or so I played for Karnataka so going up the age group so under 16 19 and for the senior squad so it was a great experience and I think about 5 or 6 years was with uh, Irfan Seth so lots to learn from him as a as a coach and also the the whole unit at KIOC so that was uh, an yeah. excellent um, uh, foundation so to speak then I had a short stint in the UK I was there to study uh, after my bachelor's it was 2 3 years of uh, county cricket and then 2011 was when I got to Germany um, again for for academics uh, but I I guess I'm, I met the girls in 12 late uh, 2012 or maybe early 2013 a uh, bit of club cricket in frankfurt where i'm based um men's cricket at that point mm-hmm. and i guess my debut was 2013 for germany and um it's been a great run and i mean of course I, when i started steph was the captain it's been some big shoes to fill <laughs> if i may say uh but yeah it's uh, it's a great time to be involved in um cricket uh, in germany yep. for for girls especially because it's you know it's growing a uh, great bunch of people and everybody wanting to develop the game uh, in their best capacity so that's me <laughs> onwards and upwards for both of you um yeah. there's a running joke that you know to qualify for the german women's cricket team uh, you need to have a minimum masters degree uh, obviously <laughs> uh, you both are in the medical field are there many more girls in the team you know Yeah, I think Anu keeps on saying I think we're the most qualified cricket team in the world. I think we've got I think I should, serve, I should do a serve. I should do a survey on that. Yeah. Find out. No, no, got really cool. Three or four doctors, I think, yeah. and most people have studied something. So it's uh, uh, yeah, you can actually see that with a lot of the girls they go about it very technically and they really have to understand it and 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 they're very particular about the rules it's not just oh. the academic thing also probably a german thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah you guys like to be perfectionist germans um i guess you know both of you in, being in in highly educated careers um you know it's always a a tough balance to try and mix your cricket with your profession um like stephanie for example you've got a night shift tonight um you know It's how do you both try and make sure that you get the most best out of you both in with cricket and your profession? Yeah, uh, yeah, but it is it is tough because it's almost like living two lives. I'd say you know alter ego. Um, but thankfully, most of the the domestic cricket what we play in Germany is on weekends, so it's not that you have to take time <laughs> off work. Uh, of course, if it's a tour with the national team, then you're gone maybe for a week or slightly longer. uh which is all right so that goes off your uh holiday uh, uh you know slots uh but i can't complain i guess it's it's um it's, a, it's fun to play i think especially if you've got a bunch of people who you want to see often train together travel uh, it just um, takes off that work pressure so to speak um so weekend away with the national team is always great fun uh, not just the cricket but just the whole social atmosphere so so it's quite enjoyable Uh, but otherwise yeah sometimes i do end up working maybe long long days or on other weekends when there's no cricket so you do have to compensate a bit but that's something that's been part of life now for a long time so yep. it's not that you think of it oh wow you know i do have to make time that is priority everything else takes back seat currently it seems to work so uh, so far good <laughs> must be a similar story for you stephanie Yeah, I mean it's hard um especially uh, working in a profession where you work on weekends so the summers are basically work and then for out of four weekends two you work and two you are away for cricket so you got to love the game in order to really play it sometimes it's hard to to get it um organized together like the summer when I missed the Austrian tour it, it was kind of heartbreaking but 
you know, that's how it is. I, I have a passion for my job and I have a passion for cricket. Luckily, when you're so busy doing both um, and you meet up with a group of girls that you really enjoy, like, um, I yeah. mean, the team's my second family. And like Anu and I, are, she's one of my best friends. We travel together also. So um, it really makes up for, for spending all this time doing doing something that you really love with people that you really enjoy hanging around with. Outstanding, outstanding. Now, Stephanie, you've been part of uh, German cricket for some time, so obviously you've seen it evolve. Um, in terms of, um, you know, the difficulties that cricket faces in a country like Germany, not just women's cricket, but men's cricket, obviously, it's a place where football is the preferred sport. Um, you know, what are some of the struggles you have uh, experienced and how has it changed over time? Um, yeah, I think when we started out, nobody took women's cricket very serious. So it was always kind of like, oh, yeah, you guys do your thing. And I think in the meantime, it's really evolved a lot and we are taking very seriously. I think we're very lucky that our German cricket board um, is behind us and takes us very seriously. Um, so that's a good thing. Cricket generally will probably always struggle in Germany to, to set a foot down. It will always compete um, when you're looking for grounds with soccer um, or football and it will always be hard to find a ground and someone who will invest in it. I guess it's similar all across Europe. Um, I was just recently in Italy, they said the same thing. If you can hire or rent out a soccer field for hourly rates of 50 bucks, you're not going to give it to a bunch of yeah. cricketers who have no lobby and um, who are not going to rent it out for hourly rates. So yeah. I guess that's something we're always going to be up against. Um, but I think we're very good, especially the German women's cream team is very good at, at finding ways to, to get around it. I mean, we've slept on floors, on a, a mat and in the beginning. In the meantime, I think we're lucky to actually have a bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I think, I mean, Anu has told us stories from India that are similar. So yep. um, it's an evolving game and it, it seems to be getting better by the year, but we have to keep on fighting for it. And I guess we all have the spirit to do so. So it's a good thing. Uh, we had um, Esther Delangi from, you know, the development officer for ICC Cricket Europe. And she was saying that Germany was one of the nations that, you know, they were focusing a lot of um, their energy and, and resources on in terms of developing. Um, do you see the changes uh, with grassroots? So, or is it, you know, a certain age where, you know, you can take up the sport of cricket? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's nice that since um, 2018 that all... Um, International games have been given T20I status from the ICC. I think this just changed the landscape, especially for women's cricket and for associate nations as well. Because, you know, for the last seven, eight years that I've been part of the team as well, we've been playing a lot of um, uh, European T20 tournaments, yeah. but none of this really counted for anything. It was more of teams getting together, organizing something. But now, now that every game that you play counts for points or, you know, the whole development strategy behind it, um, it kind of gives you that impetus to, to work towards certain goals um, mm -hmm. and I think ICC Europe have been really supportive and you know with some of the contacts that, that I've had so far they seem really uh, driven to, to push women's cricket more so uh, than ever before really um, but I guess with grassroots and development work it does go down to a lot of the club work that happens um, Hopefully in the next year or two, we have a bit more school programs coming in. That's something that's part of the uh, program from, from the Deutsche Cricket Bund as well. But again, you know, this does go back to um, personnel available, like coaches who can do this full time. Because a lot of the coaches in Germany, for example, Steph and I as well, we, we are level two coaches. We work with our club teams, we do the coaching. But if we have to go into a school to do this, <laughs> you have to forego your work. So. There's, I don't think there's much more left for people to kind of uh, yeah. put their yeah. foot into in a way. So I guess a bit more investment in, in uh, people who can help with the development at, at grassroots, at club level, whether it's coaching, whether it's admin. Uh, the scope is you know, unlimited. Uh, it's just about focusing on a few key areas that probably you'll see a few changes in say three years from now or five years from now. 
So I guess we have to be a little bit strategic about how we go ahead. Um, and these are part of you know the work in progress. Mm. Uh, but I do think the 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 results will show maybe in four or five years with more youngsters coming into the team, and uh, whether it's you know boys or girls. Um, so so it probably has. Um, yeah, uh, we we do think about this every time we get together. Uh, again, in terms of infrastructure and stuff, there's uh, there's so much that can be done. Uh, so hopefully uh, things will go in the upward direction. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, I guess you have to always look uh, back and try and see if, you know what's the way forward for for German cricket um, on the field. Let's talk to you on your other about about Austria. Um, you know. You had a you had a day out, took four wickets in four balls, a world record for the first female cricketer to do that. Uh, five for one spell as well. Um, an outstanding achievement. Um, tell us about that moment and what it means to you. Oh, it's it's quite surreal. I mean, thinking about it now because it's just so weird when when you you've got that tag of a world record holder. <laughs> but uh, I guess you know it's about two months ago, and life does go on. It's not like it's changed that much. But uh, I mean, honestly, at that moment, I don't think any of us realized because we were just you know, going through the over, and then the next one uh, it was much later, at, like the end of the day, when the messages sort of poured in. Uh, so it took a few days to kind of sink in. Uh, but it's nice. I guess the, uh, I was just like looking back at the video recently, and the the celebration at that fourth ball was so dead. Honestly, <laughs> if there's one thing I could change, I would I would do that <laughs> because I guess the the hat trick ball was already super exciting. It was my first hat trick, international uh, uh, hat trick, so to speak. So, and we'd had one the previous day from yeah, Anna. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So it was almost like, oh my god, let's see what happens, and boom. Uh, so, so that was quite cool. Uh, but yeah, we had so many records that tour, and it's just really gratifying to see all the work that the girls have put in uh, yep. to kind of come out in in, in those. On whether it was the hundreds from our um, top order or the openers, or you know Emma had a five wicket haul. She's our youngest player um, champ, really. And Anna had a hat trick. So mine just happened to be one of one of those. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a bit weird that it's a world record. <laughs> Amazing. It's Amazing. Funny. I never told you about this, but I saw it um, at work. So yeah. I had my phone in my pocket, kind of in between patients. I was looking at my. <laughs> Hopefully, it wasn't during patients. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> I actually saw that exact moment when it happened. I was really wow. lucky to be in between patients, and I was like, "What? What?" And I showed all my colleagues, and they were so unimpressed because they have no idea what no cricket idea. is. <laughs> Crazy, crazy. Too, but I was too. running around the hospital going nuts and <laughs> and then uh, yes, I was there. Two two hat tricks in consecutive days, you know, for German cricket. Uh, amazing achievement. Um now comes to captaincy. I'll I'll start with you, Stephanie, because you know you have been for, for a longer period of time. Um what are some of the challenges of being a captain for an associate nation? I think it's changed a lot in the recent years. I think in the beginning, I mean, I was learning by doing. I haven't had any experience with with cricket before, so I was just on the spot learning as we go. Um, I think in the beginning it was more about, okay, where do we put our people? Um, and there was a lot of pressure, I think, on the captain to to think for the players, and whereas we develop that into really making the players, especially the bowlers, aware of where they want their people to be um, so we can focus more on tactics. And I think the team has developed so far in the meantime that um, the captain can really focus on, on being the captain and thinking about the tactics um, of when to bowl who and and um, what order you want to go through the batting yep. or what the conditions are like. Whereas when I was captaining, I think the focus was more on let's, let's learn see. The game. Yeah. <laughs> let's learn the game as much as you can. Yeah. yeah. And yourself, Anu, in terms of, uh, I guess we talked about challenges, but for you, you know, what's uh, you know, some of the rewarding aspects of, of being a leader on, on the field? Well, they just just to watch the people or players sort of enjoy the game because that's the reason we all play, right? You love the game, and at the end of the day, if, you know, whether you win or lose, that's part of you know you take that in your stride. 
um, just the fact that at the end of the day we have been on a, a drink and laugh about what's happened well or you know have to reflect a bit on what didn't go so well and and see the progress over the last few years it's really um, rewarding um, and I'm sure our support staff would, would say the same because I mean I remember last year when we played in um, uh, La Manga when we played our first T20I it was also the um, World Cup qualifier um, I mean, it was a bit heartbreaking for me to be sitting outside because I was you know down with injury and I just traveled with the team but just for us to take the field and and you know kind of make that it was a historic moment and I guess that was sort of culmination of about 10 years of work. I mean, just talking mm. about this is me. So, <laughs> uh, it was really um, nice to see that, you know, how far we've come. And every year, I guess the improvement is, is pretty obvious to see for, for the players. And, you know, our coach, Michael, who he, he's based in England. He's based in the Northeast. He comes down once a month and he does everything in his capacity. Although, you know, living there, uh, chatting with the players. Um, however, he can sort of help them uh, with their skill development uh, remotely as well and I mean, he's, he's got a full-time job as well but he does it because he I'm guessing Loves he enjoys it. Yeah. It too. Uh, and since we've had him join the team I guess the the improvement is also really like exponential I'd say I mean I know it's an exaggeration but for me as a captain I do see that with each of the players and uh, it, it sort of shows with all the games we played so this year we had a tour in Oman 4-0 win uh, Austria as well so it's um, yeah. So, so I guess that's one of the rewarding aspects, and to see the players sort of think for themselves and develop as as individuals, as players as well. That's that's quite nice. And you try your best as a as a team leader to kind of facilitate that process um, on the field, off the field. Yeah. And I hope um, you know in in the end, as I said, if, as long as we all have a good day together, uh, that's most important. Yeah. Yep. Nothing like um, you know team success. Um, in terms of moving forward for German cricket, uh, obviously COVID, um, you know, has stunted the progress at the moment. But you know, what's in the pipeworks? Uh, what what's the preparations like? And you know, what what are planned for for the near future? Um, well, I guess for winter we're we're going to go ahead with our monthly training sessions. We still have to work around the logistics based on travel, getting people together. And of course, you know, the, the situation with COVID changes dynamically every two weeks. There's some new restrictions, so we have to be a bit uh, cautious around that. Uh, but I think next summer is going to be quite big. So we know we're playing the qualifier again in perhaps July or August. Uh, so that's the big uh, event we're looking forward to. So kind of working backwards, the, the preparation, knowing the teams that we're going to play. And hopefully some more cricket before we go on to that tournament. Again, yeah. uh, travel allowing. Uh, but that's that's currently the plan, and we still want to work a bit more on uh, getting you know some of the younger girls uh, into the squad, perhaps a under-19 team in in the next couple of years. So that's something at the back of our mind as well. Um, so yeah, national team-wise, that's the that's the plan going forward. And uh, Steffi, for yourself, I mean, I've asked Anuradha about Austria, but yourself, what have been some of your favorite moments, both individually and as a team? Yeah, I think the, the tour at the beginning of the year to Oman was pretty special. Um, uh, since Anu and um, one of our other openers who had just had a baby now um, were out for opening, uh, I was put into the opening spot for batting since the um, World Cup qualifiers in La Manga last year. And I really feel like in Oman, I could actually implement that and, and get get it going for the team. So that was super special for me. Um, yeah. <laughs> and in terms I of team, I guess in terms of the team success, uh, you know, is there any yeah, moment that you look at? The, Yes, and I said that when we took the field in La Manga last year for our first official T20I, that was a super special moment for me. Um, I was sitting there with with um, some of the girls that we started the team with in 2009, and we said, I mean, look at how far we've come now. We're playing international cricket. We're actually on on the same website as the big teams uh, where you can read up our scores and it, it's super, it was super special for me to, you know, I've been putting so much work into 
um, my game plus growing cricket in Germany over the last 15 years and to to reap that was just amazing to just be part of it so that was super special for me all the positivity to both of you um, you know moving forward and for the German cricket team hopefully you get to play a lot more international cricket um, because the potential is there the improvements there and you guys are making big big strides uh, you know when it comes to international cricket in the women's game and I've got some rapid fire questions for both of you um, if that's okay let's start with the first one I'm going to start with Steffi first and I don't know that you can answer after Steffi as well um, okay, okay. One quality that you both admire in each other. <laughs> Don't give each other a big head. <laughs> no. uh, humor and um, I forgot the word in English. Having a, a high moral standard. I really like oh, that yes, about Anu. Yeah. She's a, she's a very has very good integrity for herself and towards the team. I really like that. And I'm so touched. But not a problem with her. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, Don't cry, guys. Don't cry, please. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'll go with the humor as well because, you know, Stevie is like the clown in the team, really. <laughs> Quite the goofball. Uh, and I guess the, the second one is, um, well, there's so many. Um, I, I think he's really empathetic. Uh, that's something I've tried to, to learn, and especially as a leader, because I've seen that when she's been captain. And something I've you know, always tried to imbibe. I don't know if I've ever said this to you, but yeah. <laughs> it comes with the profession, I guess, as well, right? Uh, as a medical Perhaps. professional, you have to be empathetic. Um, now, second question is, who has the neatest kit bag amongst both of you? <laughs> <laughs> Neither. <laughs> yeah, that's the right answer. <laughs> um, okay, this one is, firstly, we'll start with Anuradha. Who are or who is your favorite cricketer at the moment? Mm, Meg Lanning, easy one. Australian, yeah. Yeah, yeah she's Stephanie. pretty good, but my heart is still with Megan Shoot. Yeah, <laughs> both Australians, wow, nice. Hopefully we can get them on around the wicket one day. Um, one women's cricketer's game that you would love to have? Hmm. I'll go with another Australian, Perry, just because she's she's amazing with anything she does. Mm. And I think just in general as a personality and, and she just seems to like pretty down to earth and um, really kind of like really a stalwart in the game and, and yep. doing everything that she can to uh, stand for the right things and kind of promote it in, in the best way possible. So Perry. Yep. Um, in all around, yeah, in all aspects. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you too as well, Stephanie? Yeah, at least Don't Perry. steal my answers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, this is not cricket related. This is favorite Bundesliga team. Oh, I don't watch football. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. No but problems. because I'm from Frankfurt, I'll go with Eintracht Frankfurt. I don't even know what position they are in. <laughs> Do you know Frankfurt. any players in the team? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Delicious. Wow. I, know, well, yeah. I think that just shows how little time she has next to work. <laughs> yeah, that's right. She can't watch any matches. <laughs> I get more time to watch here than you do. <laughs> yeah, perhaps. <laughs> no, I think, I mean, living in Munich, obviously, Bayern, I follow a bit. Um, but it's a bit boring because they win all the time. <laughs> yeah, they do. Um, question number six. What do you like to do away from cricket, Stephanie? First. Travel. Uh, I think is a big part that I enjoy. Um, sometimes with Anu, she's a hilarious travel partner. Um, and yeah, doing sports in the mountains, living here next to the Alps is, is really fortunate. Wow. I love going nice. yep. mountain biking, hiking, spending mm -hmm. the nights in the mountains. It's really cool. Awesome. And Anu, rather yourself? Um, hiking, it's also something I enjoy and, you know, living in Germany, you've got access to, to things, but I do uh, enjoy, you know, some long ones in, in the Himalayas, I always try and make time oh, for that, yeah. uh, and photography, landscape, maybe a bit of wildlife, every time I'm in India, it's uh, abundant uh, game viewing, so yeah, photography and hiking, I'd go with that. She made yes, me get up at five o'clock in the morning to take a picture of the sun coming up in the Himalayas <laughs> two years ago. 
<laughs> I don't want to miss that. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to miss that. Uh, I guess living in Europe as well, you know, that's the benefit. You can see everything and anything and experience everything. Um, okay, this is also not cricket related. Question number seven, favorite German dish? Ah, you go first. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, yeah, that's a hard one. Favorite Probably. cuisine. Okay, let's let's cut the German dish out. Let's say favorite cuisine. I love Indian. I really like Indian food. I try cooking it every once in a while, but uh, obviously uh, not as talented as a European person. But yes, Indian I love a lot. Sure, it will taste good. Yourself, Anuradha? Uh, of course, Indian. <laughs> <laughs> No, but I have to say Steffi is, is pretty good for, for a European. I think she knows a lot of um, tips and tricks Spices. with, with yeah. Indian food. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm vegetarian. So if, if I had to answer your <laughs> previous question, favorite German food, not that much option, but yeah, Kaiser Schweitzer as well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And quest two more questions. I've got one thing that you would like to see change with women's cricket globally. I get recognition. I think we're getting there more and more. Um, but I really think that women should be equally recognized and represented in the media. And then you can also justify an equal pay. Yeah. Uh, because I really think that um, if you put or display more women's cricket in the media, there will be a growth in interest. And we saw that with the Big Bash League coming more and more over the last couple of years and, and being represented it's more watched and people are more interested in it and then obviously you can develop a lobby and, and finance the players and guarantee them equal pay and same as put together a lot of stuff there so mm. uh, maybe on a on a more and internationally yes the, all of that uh, holds good but I guess just having seen a bit of domestic cricket in, in, in India or in um, I think England was fairly different or in Germany, I think at the grassroots and, and more local league and stuff, I think people should stop being patronizing to, to women's yeah. cricket, not women's cricket, women's sport and realize that, you know, qualified coaches, administrators, you know, when they say something, it does uh, hold, hold ground and just be open minded towards women's sports in general. Yeah. yeah. Final question for both of you. One thing that you cannot live without? Cricket! <laughs> <laughs> oh, if, you, if you chose any other answer, I would have been disappointed. But well done. Thank you very much, both of you. And rather, Stephanie, thank you very much for being part of uh, Around thank the Wicket. You. Appreciate the chat uh, regarding German cricket. Uh, like I said, all the you know positivity and well wishes to both of you for, for your cricket and for the national team. Uh, fingers crossed uh, you get to play a lot more international cricket. And uh, hopefully we can cross paths once again. Thanks for having us. That was a fun chat. And yeah, no worries. Hope.